morning and welcome on this Feast of Pentecost. Welcome to all who are worshiping with us live and to those who are watching us delayed on their computers and phones. We'll be following the order of service on page 266 in the New Blue Book. Uh, Psalm 104 is the psalm today. We'd like to run through that once before the service begins. Psalm 104. <coughs>
rejoiced with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. The Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, God and Lord, come to us this joyful day with your sevenfold gift of grace. We kindle in our hearts the holy fire of your love, that in a true and living faith we may tell abroad the glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Almighty God, grant to your church the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading for the Feast of Pentecost is recorded in the prophet Joel. And afterward I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Here ends the Old Testament reading. Our psalm today is Psalm 104. <laughs> Sitting. 
they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own language. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise for the gospel. <clears throat> The Holy Gospel is recorded in John chapter 16. Jesus said, Now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, Where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We continue with our sermon hymn number 585, Come Holy Ghost, God and Lord. Please be seated.
Grace and peace are ours for our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God for the Feast of Pentecost is from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. PBS, the public broadcasting system, is famous for its nature programs, especially time-lapse photography, whether it's the changing of the seasons or the growing of a plant. I think of the pictures this time of the year of the potential for our gardens, whether vegetables or flowers, from the seed put into the ground, the time-lapse photography then shows it germination. It goes from seed to seedling to bud to blossom to fruit to harvest. Think about it. In the upper room, Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, spoke of himself and his followers as Plant. John 15, verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. The person who remains in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. On Pentecost, in the early days of the New Testament church, we see the planting, the germinating, the budding of God's word in the hearers of God's word. We look at the fruits of faith which resulted from the preaching and teaching of God's word and the working of the Holy Spirit in hearts. We say, Lord, give us such churches. The church that blossomed after Pentecost was, first of all, devoted to God's word. Secondly, it was a family where there was love for one another. And thirdly, a generosity. And a caring. All of this coming from the contact with the Word of God. We all know the results of using a good fertilizer. Whether our plant food is Miracle Grow or Miracle Manure, plants grow bigger and better, and bigger and better harvests come when we're well established in fertile ground. The spiritual life of the early church was a result of good plant food. The branches were connected to the vine, Jesus, and through their contact with him in the gospel, the good news about his coming into this world, his suffering and death to take away our sins, and then his resurrection to eternal life, all of these were filling a spiritual hunger and thirst and was satisfied and quenched through the preaching of God's word, their connection with the Bible. For some, it was a newfound faith. For others, it was a faith rekindled to a glow. And all of it was the result of more and more contact with Scripture. Verse 42, they continued to hold to the teaching of the apostles and to the fellowship to the breaking of bread and of prayer. Verse 46, all were one at heart as they continued to go to the temple every day. God's word and the Lord's Supper was a regular daily and weekly part of their spiritual diet. And you know, there was no apparent concern about too much Bible study. They weren't afraid of becoming fanatics 
The idea of being in the Bible too much, turning you into a fanatic, that's the devil's twist on things. Fanaticism doesn't come from the Bible. It comes from Satan's twists and his lies. It's fanaticism from the devil that divides, that makes us believe in conspiracies and lies, causes bigotry and racism. With their love for God's word, there blossomed a love for one another, not a distancing and second guessing of the other person's motives, but a love for God's family. These new believers had a deep and abiding love for one another. Verse 46, breaking bread from house to house, they shared their food with glad and simple hearts. Breaking bread does not necessarily mean the Lord's Supper, but it certainly can include that. Often early Christians met together weekly for a fellowship meal, something like our potlucks. And with the bread and wine that was there at the fellowship meal, at their potlucks, they would also celebrate the Lord's Supper. You know, they did not have a self-centered I can go it alone idea about Christianity. They saw themselves as linked together in their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They saw themselves as a family called together by God's word and nurtured by God's word. They saw their fellowship as a sign of their faith and an opportunity to serve one another and also to serve their Lord. Saturated as they were in the spirit-breathed scriptures, is it any wonder that their lives overflowed with the fruits of faith? Along with a love for the Lord and a love for his people, there was a generosity in giving for their first love. Our text says all who believed were together and shared everything with one another. From time to time, they sold their lands and other possessions and then distributed the money to all the needy in proportion to each one's need. These Christians were in no way obligated to sell their property and turn the profits over to the congregations. We think of Ananias and Sapphira and how they wanted to give the impression that they were turning everything over to the church and Peter warned them that was it not yours before and you were not obligated to sell it but you are giving the impression that you have turned it all over for the Lord's sake now they weren't obligated this was something that of their own volition their own choice out of love for their Lord and their fellow Christians if they saw a need they answered it they had a generous concern in their hearts, a profound trust that the Lord will provide. They weren't afraid to do the right thing. They placed matters into God's hands and they did what needed to be done. They were not taken up with the here and now like we so often find ourselves. They saw God's eternal purpose and they tried to put themselves into God's eternal plan. Lord, give us such churches. That's not a prayer of desperation or dissatisfaction. Lord, give us such churches. The same Holy Spirit who daily added to the church then is the life of the church now. Every heartbeat of life in Christ's church down to this moment is the work of God the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. As we confess with Luther in the third article of the Apostles' Creed, the Holy Ghost calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. Lord, give us such churches. That's a prayer that the Lord would continue to work in us through our ongoing, richer and richer understanding of Scripture. God would continue the good work he's begun in us. 
what he has done in the past, Lord, keep on doing through us for the sake of many others. Attached to Jesus, may we be devoted to the word and to each other and the special generosity toward each other for the Lord's sake. Amen. The peace of God which goes beyond all understanding to keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us rise and confess our faith using the words of the Apostles. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for prayer. <laughs> Lord, hear my prayer, listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness come to my relief. Spare us, Lord, from the lies of the devil and the attacks of our conscience. Comfort and save us in your patient compassion. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Guide us, Lord, to the wisdom of your word and the power of your promises. Take away our confusion and doubt. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Hear us, Lord, when we come to you in prayer. Make us confident to take you at your word and to follow you in faith. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us, Jesus. Empower us, Lord, to walk in your ways and live in your truth. Fill us with your love that we may love you and one another. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us, Jesus. Lord God, Heavenly Father, creator of all things great and small, we, your creatures, come before you, our hearts filled with gratitude and praise. As we consider the complexity of the smallest living being and give thought to the marvelous ways in which you have made us, we stand in awe of your wisdom. Not only have you marvelously created all things, but you have also provided for their continuing needs. You open your hands, and they are filled with good things. For this, your care and providence, we give you humble thanks. Since we live by the breath of your mouth, and our souls need nourishment as well as our bodies, we are especially thankful on this day of Pentecost that you poured out the gift of your Holy Spirit. By his power, we have become your children through faith in Jesus Christ. As your children, we need constant renewal and strengthening of our faith. We claim your promise given through your prophet Joel that you would pour out your spirit on all flesh. And we implore you to include us in the fulfillment of that promise. As members of your church, we ask you to give us the wisdom and the dedication to carry out our awesome responsibility for the welfare of souls and the upbuilding of your kingdom. In the name of the head of the church, even our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Almighty God, by the death of your Son, you conquered sin, and by his resurrection, you restored our innocence and gave us everlasting life. Fill our hearts with steadfast faith that we may daily serve you in your kingdom and praise you and thank you always through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and keep us. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 593. Sunday we go to our summer schedule for June, July, and August. Worship will be at 9.30. You should have seen a bushel basket of rhubarb outside the front door. Please help yourself. There are uh, bags there to uh, take home your, your stash. This coming week is Lee's birthday, so we want to remember that. <laughs> some of the love for one another fellowship that we talked about in today's sermon. Are there any announcements that need to be made? Two weeks ago, I did mention in the church about the highway department working at the construction outside our church. And I sent emails to everybody. If he's had a chance to look at them, I hope. Uh, if you've got questions, I brought a copy here. I've seen a look at that. It's not like it's an immediate uh, emergency. But you probably don't wait until, much wait until the last moment to take a look at it and see how it affects us because we will lose parking slots, including the sign. Um, the sign will be replaced by the highway department at their expense. Well, I said, yeah. <laughs> but losing parking spaces and wondering can we lose more space for the sign or what we, there's any number of options. Um, so it's, Today, otherwise, uh, don't get it. We can just chat it some other time. I have not had a chance to talk to Kurt, but as president, you know, he's president of the congregation. There will probably need to be a meeting, some, always meeting, somewhere along the line. Uh, Kurt and I checked it out uh, as far as the sign with his GPS yes. app 
and our sign infringes about four or five inches into the right of way at this time. The current right of way. Uh, the mm -hmm. preliminary plans show a new line going to the middle of the sign the way they put it on the map. So are they increasing their right of way? I don't know that works that way. But uh, to get four lanes, two lanes up, one lane down, and a left turn lane. Four lanes. Four lanes. Yes. Two lanes <coughs> down are coming up, whichever. One going down, and the left turn lane in between. And, they, and it's proposed to close our south entrance to only have the shared entrance. I have questions on uh, once it's closed, it will not be opened up again. And do we want to keep it open uh, or fuss about it? There's any number of options. Um, Betty, I can't speak for her, but her apparently her son doesn't isn't looking at uh, taking over the business. At some point, there will be a parcel of property opened up. Uh, our neighbor is not living on her property. There may be at some point, uh, knowing how things are wrapped up when they go to sale. Um, there's any number of unknowns. As a small congregation, it's always good for us to look at the options and see what might want to be done. I, I know Rick Rocker myself. Yes. And, you know, the, the plans that he sent for you, that there, there's, there's a lot of things that I identified on the, on the a, thing of what they do. It's a preliminary plan for a reason. Rich is a good person. He, um, he is. And he is considered. He knows 